it's not results. Uh, but we are showing it because it's a collaborative project and uh, HEALS is an association, so a collaborative uh, association and here it's a project that is uh, quite uh, big or uh, ambitious uh, that is being shared by uh, thousands of uh, people uh, online uh, that we are trying to structure so it's, uh, if it goes on, we will see. The, the, the goal is to share it with you, to get feedback, to, uh, to see how to organize it. Um, and so that's why we, we want to share it with you, to have insights in order to do things right, and not to do things that shouldn't be done, and uh, etc. So it's called Major Mouse Testing Program. Um, te mouse Testing Program, that's uh, what the uh, NIA does in the US. Every year, they start a few new uh, robust mouse lifespan and health span <coughs> tests. And uh, they use compounds. Um, and from there, uh, we've had uh, some interesting results that are quite known in the community. Uh, probably the most known one is the rapamycin robust uh, life extension even when started at age uh, at a late, late onset uh, which is quite impressive because for example uh, such is not so obvious with for example caloric restriction um, and, uh, and so it means that we have perhaps a drug that exists today that people take that is quite toxic, so people are a bit afraid of taking it if they are healthy. I don't know many people who take rapamycin, uh, but uh, that could perhaps work in uh, humans. And similarly, we have uh, aspirin and we have uh, metformin. And recently, there has been quite uh, well a few papers, uh, quite large uh, uh, reviews uh, um, of uh, human epidemiology, uh, suggesting that uh, aspirin and metformin. Uh, may uh, have a, a particular effects on uh, cancer prevention, cardiovascular prevention. Uh, so it may be that uh, mouse results uh, have some uh, application to humans. Um, so uh, also because this is uh, HEALS and we are in Brussels, I would like to make the link with the European Commission um, and the situation that uh, uh, deciders uh, meet. Uh, so we are going to see a tsunami of uh, illnesses uh, unless there is a terrible disease uh, because we are here and it's unlikely we are going to die before the age of uh, 80 or, or more. Um, so uh, the only possibility would be to increase uh, health. Uh, so why uh, is it a tsunami? Uh, not because in fact, well, why well, it is a problem? Not because the number of aged persons comes from 7% uh, in the 1950 to 30% uh, of the population uh, soon. Uh, this is not necessarily a problem in itself because uh, if people uh, live longer uh, and are healthier, that's the, the important point. Uh, for the economy it's good because uh, uh, we can have, uh, we can postpone, uh, even if people don't like it, even if it's a bit difficult, uh, the uh, retirement age or increase the work duration. Which, is, uh, which has what we say a double effect, so we both don't pay retirement to those persons for some time and they provide uh, their activity for the economy. Uh, so that's not in itself a trouble. The trouble is that a lot of people will be unhealthy and the European Commission has uh, chosen some indicator to follow that. So we have the life expectancy that goes up uh, one quarter per, per year uh, and we have the, uh, well, uh, the healthy life expectancy, they call it healthy life years, so there are two different markers, but the one they look at is this one, it's close to the age of 65, um, and this one doesn't seem to increase, uh, so and of course it depends on what it means exactly, uh, but uh, it is true that we have more and more chronic diseases as we face a new uh, population uh, that faces aging, that's all very simple, so we are, we're having longer chronic aging, I prefer this word, related diseases and this means that uh, the way we are progressing today is probably not the right one. Uh, it's good to make wheelchairs, I'm not saying the contrary, but it's probably better to first stay healthy and that's why we are here. 
So the European Commission uh, decided to try to invest a lot in Europe uh, in order to, uh, so several billions every year, uh, in order to uh, increase uh, the healthy lifespan. And their goal was to increase, because in 2012, lifespan by two, the healthy lifespan by two years. And it seems very difficult so far uh, to them, uh, but if we ask us, it doesn't seem so difficult. Uh, so uh, you have, for example, in, uh, this nice little uh, sentence from the Nature uh, Journal. Uh, there is hope that at some time uh, in the future, elderly people will be kept healthy uh, by suppressing the aging process itself. So it becomes quite serious. Uh, Google is uh, implied, and everyone here knows it. Uh, so uh, many, many uh, researchers uh, try to explain, uh, even people uh, online try to explain, because it seems that there, there are two speeds in understanding this, and clearly that's the good future. Uh, so why is there some difference of understanding? Uh, probably because in fact uh, it's true, the body is terribly complex, uh, so that's on the top left. Uh, the body is terribly complex. We, when we test drugs in animals, we test them in humans, sometimes we have uh, horrible effects that we didn't see. Uh, also when we talk of long-term effects, we regularly uh, see that some drugs have uh, terrible effects. The fact is that the body is extremely complex and it's very difficult to know when we push here or here or here what is going to happen in one minute, ten minutes, one year and, uh, and eight years. Uh, so uh, so uh, we <coughs> face something that we cannot decipher, or perhaps one day, but not today. Um, and uh, so that's, that means probably health is difficult to address. But the good news uh, over the last decades of biogerontology is that we found that actually a lot, a lot of things work. So in fact it's easy to change a healthy lifespan, uh, even if we don't understand really how, why, etc. Uh, so uh, longevity is uh, malleable, that's what we say in many ways. Uh, so on the top right, uh, in worms, I have a really nice video and we would very much like, we would prefer to have the future of Europe like those modified worms that stay healthy. Um, and uh, also mice, so uh, two years ago we had the chance at the EHA 2012 to have the, to be among the first ones, to, I think the first ones in the world to see the results of uh, Steven Spindler. Uh, who was uh, showing us that uh, there were uh, a few robust uh, ways to increase the lifespan and health span in mice uh, and also in humans because we are saying, as I said in the introduction, that actually, uh, quite surprisingly, uh, perhaps because longevity is a global phenomenon and not something very specific, uh, it seems that there are, there are some things that transpose to humans. Um, uh, so, uh, so that's the good news uh, and probably the future, we hope. Uh, and from there, at the Hills, we had uh, made a, a European uh, a project uh, in the European Commission. Uh, it was called Kelly, knowing uh, effects on uh, uh, healthy life years, so the long term. Um, and it was just to say, given it's, it's difficult to predict, but easy to get good results, let's monitor uh, what is happening in humans, let's test in, in mice, uh, because of empirical evidence it makes a lot. Uh, and so here I'm not going to describe the humans because that's what a lot of companies do, what a lot of researchers do, and we are also interested in it. I'm going to describe this other project, animals, uh, mice, uh, and uh, as you have put some, some names, so some uh, symbols, many, many uh, communities are trying to do something for this project. Uh, so I don't want to sp spend too much time, uh, just to say that uh, I will just read the the left side, uh, we've had uh, great uh, life extensions in, in C. elegans. Uh, in 2002, I was at UCLA working with C. elegans and we were increasing their lifespan by 20%. We were extremely very uh, happy about it and now we can multiply by 10 almost their lifespans. So it's a complete change. Uh, then I discovered that, that, uh, that uh, worms were not people. <laughs> and uh, well, people, now people tell me mice are not people, that's true too. Uh, but uh, worms, they have a fixed number of cells and I think that if we live so long and as we've been discussing uh, today and yesterday, it's, uh, if we already live long it's because we, our body replaces itself and, and that's, where we, that's the main mechanisms we need to work on, we've discussed about uh, 
uh, senescent cells, etc., um, and replacement. Uh, so uh, we have that incorporated, and so uh, probably mice is quite better for that. Um, and uh, so uh, there is some, tra some transposability, it's certainly not perfect, uh, but uh, we can test a lot of things in mice and we can dissect them, we can analyze them in many ways, and in humans it's a lot more complex, a lot, a lot longer and a lot uh, more expensive. Um, so now that we've said this, the project is being uh, uh, cut in, in small pieces, uh, so one piece is, uh, what does it mean testing in mice? Uh, so we came up with this and uh, we, I will be very happy if any of you wants to discuss with me at the coffee machine or anywhere or by email uh, to improve that. Uh, we think, very simply, that we want to extend life and preserve health. Uh, so extend life, uh, there has been a lot of people before us uh, to indicate it's good to use hybrid mouse models, uh, it's good to make a triple uh, checked uh, results, which means that once we have a good result, we need to check it uh, independently uh, uh, twice. Uh, so that's for lifespan. Uh, for um, health, it's a little more complex because everybody does his own tests. Uh, yesterday we had uh, the nine uh, hallmarks of aging. I think that could be a good uh, way to go. In this presentation, I didn't uh, spend much time on it, but we, we have discussions on that, and I would be very happy to discuss with any of you. Um, and then there is, of course, what to test. Um, and so, uh, the left uh, corner, I think this is quite important, our goal is to uh, uh, try in mice uh, what we would like to test in the humans, but we cannot, uh, because of the way we test it in, uh, in the humans. Uh, uh, and so uh, there are various uh, reasons why you cannot test in the humans, uh, cost, ethics, other. Um, and, uh, but uh, probably uh, in that aspect, what comes first is uh, human genetic variants, uh, because we know a lot of, uh, uh, well, we know more than 1,000 uh, SNPs or particular genetic uh, things that uh, from uh, human studies are believed to probably we have some degrees of certainty, so we don't know exactly, uh, uh, lead to uh, improved health, uh, improved uh, lifespan also. Um, and uh, we would ideally uh, put the gene and put it in someone and see if it works. Uh, but we will not do that quite easily. Uh, so if we test it in mice, it has a chance that uh, uh, if it confirms what is fine in humans, in humans uh, not only uh, we can say, okay, well, maybe that's it in the humans, but also we can invest, investigate much better what is happening and maybe make drugs or other things. Human drug treatments, obviously, we, there are people doing this already, so we, we, will, we don't want to compete, we simply want to, to help uh, and uh, at least uh, make some lists and people will, will do them. Um, so human drugs, because it's uh, very fast to transpose, uh, if we take, make tests in mice, we can measure a lot of things that we cannot test in humans, just as a lifespan, we know it's not a human model, but at least it will give us some information. Uh, and fundamental re research results. Uh, yesterday I have uh, given a small piece of uh, paper uh, in the evening, and many of you have written a few uh, ideas, and uh, that was typically this, so uh, we are full of ideas to change the world, and uh, often it doesn't go out of the lab, it doesn't go to this uh, robust mouse lifespan test. And so I think that if we want to, uh, to take the best out of what we do, that's, that's, the, that's uh, something quite needed. And also it may reorient somehow the, the, the results. Uh, when we have a negative result, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's bad, uh, because uh, there are many reasons why uh, negative results uh, can happen. But when we have a robust positive result, it means that it's quite encouraging. Uh, so, uh, so I hope that this can uh, accelerate uh, research uh, and provide more uh, tangent uh, results. So just an example of uh, interventions. Uh, so we've talked about uh, longevity variants in humans. So there is a database called uh, longevitydatabase.org. Uh, it's about the human uh, genetic variants. And so uh, I have put the two uh, most likely ones on the top. Uh, uh, so some SNPs, and uh, those ones uh, we, are, we have checked, uh, they are, uh, so it's a change of uh, allele, uh, of, uh, of a nucleotide, 
uh, in a domain, uh, uh, in a genetic uh, portion, uh, that we can find in mice also, and it's an orthologous gene, which means that probably uh, it's the same function. So probably if we make the same gene change in mice, we can somehow reproduce what is happening in, in people. Um, so we have a lot, 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 lot of, of things to test if we want. So of course the question will be how many do we want to test? Uh, we can have thousands of things to test and the goal is to test the most promising ones to be efficient, of course. Um, and right now, every year, there are only a few robust uh, mouse size plant tests and out of them, uh, one out of uh, 15 so far, or that's an estimate, it's difficult to estimate exactly, really works. Which means that when we believe in something, most of the time it's not correct. Which means this is very important to do. Um, and it also means that if we want to have a robust set of things that work in mice, um, in order to start deciphering uh, what is common, what is different, we need to make a lot of tests. Uh, and there is, it's difficult to go around that. Uh, we need to be guided by some results. It's uh, evidence-based uh, science. Uh, and so we need to have quite a lot of tests. Um, yes, uh, I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, so um, here, that's, how, that's what I've just said. Uh, at the current pace, it's a very, very rough estimation, uh, perhaps in 100 years we will get 100 successful, robust interventions that will extend the lifespan of mice. Uh, and then we will make uh, lots of analysis from that. Well, of course, there are other ways to, to go to humans uh, before having those 100 results. Uh, but uh, we hope to accelerate that. We hope that uh, perhaps these 100 results, we can have them in, in four years. Uh, and, so, uh, and so the goal is to parallelize uh, a lot of uh, mouse lifespan tests. It's not necessarily so difficult, perhaps three standard, not necessarily very big mouse facilities, coordinated can, uh, can do that um, and, uh, and so uh, uh, that's what we would like to see happening. Uh, of course it has a cost uh, so it needs to be seen uh, how. Uh, perhaps we will just simply uh, uh, put together some protocols for health testings, for uh, uh, things to test and people will, uh, each uh, researchers and every, every institution will do a few tests. We don't know yet exactly now how it's going to happen but we think it would be nice to have a few centers just to have things well organized, well controlled, uh, good results, comparable, uh, good methodology, etc. Uh, so the, it would ha happen like this in time. Uh, right now we are organizing all this. We are, so out of the thousands of people, it's, we are starting to build teams. This takes also a little time. Uh, so right now we are about 30 to follow this uh, quite actively uh, and to have split some tasks. Uh, we are starting to, everything that I'm uh, presenting is being deciphered, every slide basically. Um, and uh, the, whole, the hope is that perhaps in one year uh, we can uh, get some funding and, uh, and get some things organized and uh, etc. Uh, to start making a first series of experiments. Uh, so we will not start as written here with many animals, because probably in order to go fast we would start with existing aged animals. Mm -hmm but in parallel we will prepare the next bigger series um, and so we can hopefully rapidly get a lot of results uh, even if first they will be small but then we will combine them uh, and try to improve the results um, and, um, and better digest as, as I have seen with C. elegans in fact uh, and so the goal is to do the same with, with mammals and all along of course as there are human studies we also have projects uh, in the association and with many labs uh, to uh, make uh, human statistics uh, some kind of big data uh, and we would very much like uh, in the design of this uh, project to make parallels with humans in order to accelerate as much as possible the transposability to humans. So in terms of the very general expected reason, uh, results because sometimes people ask but why do you do this? Uh, well, first, uh, if I want to represent the community, uh, for many it's a trigger, a mind shift at all levels of society, uh, because uh, uh, we are starting to get there. We've had these uh, few results from uh, Stephen Spindler and the ITP and others, indicating that in our uh, 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 treatments at home, perhaps some of them could make us live longer. 
so and we've seen Google and we've seen so we, we see that it's, it's starting. We see many research around the mTOR pathway uh, based on this rapamycin. So it, it's starting. Uh, but we think that if we suddenly say, okay, we have 100 ways to make uh, mice live longer, there will be very few people who will say uh, it's not going to work in humans. Uh, so, um, so we think that it's going to, it can change the world uh, that way. Um, and, uh, and this is in, in, in four years, hopefully. Um, and uh, number two, it's a uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry. Uh, we are the, we, right now we are fully volunteers, we are very, very happy the pharmaceutical industry takes it uh, and we simply help them. Um, our goal is really to get uh, to humans, so uh, uh, every positive result, if they can be uh, uh, tested in, uh, as drugs or any way, or gene therapies perhaps even, uh, because it's a growing field, uh, why not then? That's, that's what we, we want. Uh, the third uh, aspect uh, is uh, a rupture in life extension science. Uh, so right now there is a lot of research done in the lab <coughs> without much guidance from those aspects. And so we hope it will be one uh, important guidance because as we said the body is complex and uh, the short term or the pathways uh, do not really uh, say what is going to happen over the long term. Uh, so we hope we can uh, guide and also highlight mechanisms for example, you may think that uh, uh, re re reducing the accumulation of stem cells is good for the body and you may find that, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a drug uh, extends the lifespan of mice and then, oh, later discover that that drug actually uh, reduces the, the, the stem cells, uh, stem, uh, the senescent cell accumulation. Uh, so, in fact, uh, instead of looking for the drug that does what you want and that is not too toxic and that with many, many, many constraints, it will be perhaps also the other way around. You will find something and then better uh, investigate what are the correct uh, theories. Um, uh, so, so yeah, best, and of course, we, we hope to make the link with humans as much as possible. So, we were going to have lots of meetings for that with uh, who is available and wants to discuss it. Uh, in order to uh, to advance in that way. Okay, so uh, very that was it. I'm making very fast things. So in 2002, I wanted to make a startup uh, with that. Uh, it was a, a platform to test for pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, health span uh, markers uh, in mice. At that time, I think it was a bit premature, um, and uh, it was difficult to find a business model. And that's why when we built all these big uh, thousands of people. Uh, uh, associations, uh, we, we thought that we, we could perhaps uh, together uh, do something, but uh, perhaps not as a startup, but more as a, uh, something different. Uh, so right now on the right, uh, I'm, I see that I have to go fast, so we've, we've uh, uh, split the product in, uh, in sub-teams, so uh, what to test, how to test, where to test, uh, uh, how to get the money, and uh, how to structure ourselves. Uh, how to make sure that if some volunteers go out, uh, the project can be continued uh, without them and someone else. Uh, how to have a knowledge base that anyone can access, uh, etc. How to handle what should be uh, confidential because some researchers <coughs> may want to give information that will be uh, confident, etc. Uh, so budget, so that's for now very rough, but uh, uh, because it depends on where it's going to be tested and uh, what is going to be already paid by the existing uh, local uh, uh, things. Uh, but uh, roughly, if we take just a one euro per mouse, uh, uh, and, and, and not, week, uh, not a year, but a uh, week, <laughs> that would be too good. Uh, then it makes uh, quite a lot of money, and that's the main uh, cost of it. So, uh, and, but there are many things to discuss, so it's difficult to say for now, exactly. Um, and, uh, well, that's a very high level picture of uh, what we would do, uh, uh, yes, anyway. And so we've identified some steps. So of course we have a, a methodology that comes from a SEMAT methodology that comes from the computer science field where we, we put every project in very little uh, pieces and uh, we check them when it's, uh, when it's done. So I have to call someone, I have to have him agree, I have to blah, 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 blah. Uh, and all this, the, that's the way to collaborate uh, when we are many. Uh, and so I thank you for your attention. And I will be very happy to have any suggestion now or later. One question, maybe. 
Thank you. Um, so, uh, so thanks. I actually have a couple of uh, su comments slash suggestions. The first one is regarding taking um, genetic variants from humans and putting them in mice. I think that's quite interesting. I'm actually involved in a grant application with some other people to do just that. Um, the problem is, so uh, as you probably know, we also maintain a number of databases related to aging, related to genes, which uh, with else false modesty, I think they're the benchmark in the field, including the longevity map database of genetic variants associated with with, um, with human longevity. The problem there is there's a lot of studies, but when you start looking at large-scale studies, there's really one gene that emerged, and that's APOE. And there's a couple of other indicative, like FOXO3A. Well, FOXO3A may be associated with longevity. So there's very few, actually, we know about. Uh, I mean, I don't know what those SNPs are for, or you got them from, but the, quite, the point is, we don't have a lot of candidates. Um, and the ones we have, apart from APOE, they may not turn out to be good. So that is a problem, I think. Although it's still interesting if there's some candidates to test it. And as I said, it's something what we're trying to do. Um, the other important aspect is, related to this and all of the studies, is where are you going to do the actual studies? I don't think you know yet, but that's the crucial element, which is where are you going to do the actual model experiments? It's not that trivial to do. And also, if what you're trying to test is something very obvious that people know already, then chances are labs are already working on that. Um, if it's something less obvious, that may be interesting, but then you need to find you know, someone who can do a good lifespan experiment. And I don't think that's that easy. So do you have any ideas for how, why you cannot do the experiments? Yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, in fact, so uh, we've contacted quite a few uh, lab uh, facilities, smart facilities, renowned ones, especially the ones from the US that uh, most people know from the ITP, from, uh, uh, from many places, from uh, the Jackson Laboratories, etc. Uh, we are in contact with them, uh, also from uh, Germany, from, uh, from France, from different places. Uh, we found that so far, which is good, many of them are, would be happy to contribute. Uh, and uh, we, we take our time. Uh, one of the reasons is that we would like the project to, to be running. And so uh, the obvious uh, uh, comment we've had, and it's very good one, it's that uh, uh, where's the money? So uh, uh, and that's very true. So uh, so we will. Uh, so we are looking at uh, funding, and some funding, for example, is uh, uh, would be preferably for some countries or some renowned institutions. Or so depending on that. Also, it's uh, so we have a few uh, considerations. Um, but we, we are in contact with some, uh, some labs, so it's being uh, discussed, and we are very transparent with them about that. Uh, and we have some, yes, some of the top uh, mouse uh, persons uh, who are interested, I mean, in my, my opinion, uh, as I judge them, because I, I like this field. Um, and so that was for the where, and so that's why we didn't put anything on the presentation. Um, and for the what to test the genes, um, I agree that if we have APOE, but that's not really longevity, that's rather APOE4, that's rather uh, mortality. Uh, we have then FOXO3A, we have a, a few uh, big ones, uh, but uh, we also have a lot of uh, non-negligible ones. The, the ones that I have shown, they come from uh, just the, so various uh, large, quite large epidemiologic studies, so maybe it's because we don't interpret as well as you, or uh, it would be good to send you the list and, uh, and see with you if, you, if you if you agree, if you have the time one day, or someone you know. Uh, so, so we have some p-values that are very low, we have some effects that are not big, not small, uh, where it's being tested in a few different populations. Uh, so uh, there are things, uh, but maybe indeed it's not really, uh, sometimes there are we don't know, know if it's exactly that gene or a neighboring uh, gene, or so it's not always easy. Uh, so that's one of the approaches. Um, and things to test, we, for example, we've put a, a Facebook group uh, that is called Potential uh, Zero Protectors to Test. And uh, whoever wants, one of you, you can try to look at it. When you, you, you have an idea, when you think something, you can just put it on the Facebook group, a new post. So the Facebook group is only for that, to collect ideas on what to test. Uh, and then we look at it and we try to analyze it and uh, uh, yes. So and, and there are, the fact is there are too many things to test really. And uh, so uh, we will have to digest, digest, digest as much as possible.